Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. Amahorus Heresy Army is growing. The Death Guard Cataracti Terminators have been the project for this week. You can see here the finished units. Now you get 10 models in the starter box that you'll have seen on the channel when you're unboxing. Split them into two squads. Five with Lightning Claws, five with Storm Bolters and Power Fists, one with a Heavy Flamer. Once you a bit more versatility in the army, you know, you can uh, get it a bit more visual difference as well. Painting them up in one batch of 10 all the same colour scheme, all the same sort of techniques. You'll notice I haven't done any moulded on uh, detail on these models, so there's no symbols yet. I'm going to come back to this unit later on and put some transfers on. I just ordered some and they're going to arrive later. So, first stage, black spray and then a gunmetal spray over the top using an airbrush. I'm going to put all the paint colours at the top of the video so you can see as you're going along if you want to use the exact paints. Obviously, you don't have to. I normally put that in the description. If you prefer it this way, you know, drop a comment down below. Stage one, GW Retributor Armour, doing all the brass detail. There's a lot of sort of detail on these models uh, to get on top of. I do the brass first. So if you make a mistake, we're going to cover over where it may have spread onto the uh, armour panel later on. If you were to do the brass last, it'd be a lot of tidying up. Metallics are relatively fiddly to cover over. Now I'm doing this banding that's round the legs quite a lot at this point now, but I'm not doing the rivets. I'm going to come back to some of those later. I've just kind of gone against what I've just said, but there is a good reason why. If you were to do the rivets now, you would have a nightmare trying to avoid painting over them. So there's swings and roundabouts about the stages you want to do things. See, I'm doing the next layer, which is the Rakarth Flesh. Now this is to represent the white armour. Uh, I personally would never use pure white to paint and that model is supposed to look white. It's meant to look a bit mucky, battlefield damage, that type of thing. So this kind of off-white Rakar Flesh is a decent colour. You'll notice when I'm painting this one as well, I'm leaving patches of metal showing through to represent the battle damage, you know, the rusty armour, the things that they've come up against, you know, whether it's in bullet knocks or, or whatever it is. Death Guard in the background of Horus Heresy don't fix their armour as they go in, so it really is a good army to do that kind of messy style. And one of the key reasons for undercoating metallic is that you can have that showing through and it looks like, you know, rust or knocked metal. If you were to undercoat black, you'd have a much harder time. You probably have to do two or three layers of paint for one, because black's obviously harder to paint on top of with a kind of a pale colour. You notice I am going through though and doing a second layer on some of those areas just to make sure they're a bit lifted up because it can be a bit thin. So two sort of thin coats on, not all, but quite a lot. Next stage is Death Guard Green onto the shoulder pads. You see here the sort of top shoulder pad. There's kind of two shoulder armour sections. I'm doing it just on the top one. I'm also doing it on the little tilting plate that's on the left shoulder there and into the helmet detail. So I've done some brass on every single helmet and then the kind of two sections there with that green. Now I'm doing a flat earth to represent the leather sort of banding on there. You could use a colour. I did consider using my army colour on here, like a red or a purple, but I thought well, the leather was kind of more fitting and it keeps them a bit sort of muted uh, and dirtier looking. So with this though, you're not doing the same technique in terms of leaving some of the metal showing. You want a full coverage because this is obviously leather and you don't want any of that kind of metal showing through underneath. So um, back onto what you would call more normal painting at this point. So it's just the two armour sections the first two stages that you want to show there. There's not too many exposed cables and things on these models, but there are some on the back which come out of the kind of power plant, and you'll see I've left quite a lot of this power plant with the metal showing, and I think that'll work really well with the later stages. But I'm just doing the cables black, and there are cables on some of the weapons, especially the heavy flamer uh, around the stomach area. So eye lenses, I've chosen yellow purely because my 40k Death Guard army, when they're all turned to Nurgle and mutated, is yellow. So I'm dropping some yellow into uh, the vision slits. You can see here, hold your models at all kind of weird angles to get that uh, paint in there. You know, you don't have to solidly hold your model flat all the time. Now onto the basin. The very first Death Guard army video I did for the Horus Heresy showed you how I've prepped the bases with the kind of cracked earth effect. I'm going for a very, very simple colour scheme, just a beastie brown on there, and it's meant to look like a ravaged kind of wasteland uh, area. Now this I'm not dry brushing here. What I'm doing, if I try to talk about a strange thing, is a wet brushing. You'll see that where there's cracked paint, so I'm not filling in the recesses with paint, but I'm putting way more paint on than you would do if you were traditionally dry brushing. I will dry brush this later after the ink technique, so you'll certainly see that. So wet brushing, dry brushing, all weird techniques. I'm considering doing a paint technique series, just like 60 second painting techniques, if you fancy that one again, you know, drop a comment. 
Now it's dirty ink wash stage, so Vallejo Game Wash, you'll see this on most of my armies. I like to have dirty, mucky uh, figure effects. So you are slapping that game wash over there. You're not going too thick. You can see they're just using a bit of tissue to take some paint off the brush and lift it where it's pooled too much. The more you use inks, the more you'll get used to how it settles and sits, um, and you'll know when to take off any excess. If it's really pooling, you want to lift it off. So just showing you the two models and how they've dried with those ink washes there quite happy with that effect and um, quite often i will say you know do the ink washing you could leave them not in this case it, it really does dirty down the white a bit too much now you see there we're going back with the same colors now i've put that rack off flesh on there and i've put way too much on you want thin coats of paint on here so all i did was clean the brush off back onto that paint where it's gone on and i'm spreading that first initial use of paint so when i'm going back onto this here i'm just using a slightly wet brush to move that paint around you want it slightly translucent for this effect so it's going on and you can see the wash through the paint and it gives that kind of dirty damaged effect we're going for now i use a wet palette so it keeps the paint fairly thin anyway if you're using this straight onto like a plate or whatever you would need to water the paint down otherwise it won't have that translucency to show the inks and stuff through it so it gives a kind of multi-tone effect when you do this we're not painting right into the crevices and cracks we're leaving that ink wash around all the kind of um recessed areas so that you've got that kind of depth and tone we're going to do exactly the same thing when we come to the shoulder pads again the same colors we've already used and you can see in my wet palette in the background i'm using the exact same paint i painted on before so literally very uh, no wasting of paint in this kind of painting technique really i will do a video on wet palettes at some point i've been promising to do it for about two years at some point i will as to why but if you're not using a wet palette you make sure you keep your paint nice and watered down uh, for this because if you're putting the paint on pure straight from the pot it was pointless kind of doing that ink wash stage because you going to cover too much of it over even on the flat panels you want some of it to kind of show through on the flat panels slight difference again when we're just talking about the leather we're doing more of an edge highlight here uh, on the leather areas just go around and just putting it on that raised edges and again that will give the darkest wash in the pure recess the flat areas will have the uh, wash that isn't quite as thick over it and then you're doing an edge highlight of that brown. And that's final detailing. I'll just show you on this one flamer model. We're going around putting some of the black that I put on the chainsaw there and all the cables. And I'm putting a Vallejo dark red on the tanks. I completely forgot to paint the fuel tanks prior to doing the wash stage. It's not too bad. It's not going to be as good as if it had been put on before the wash, but it'll go on and it'll be, you know, there and thereabouts. And look, there's not a problem with having one of your models not looking exactly the same as the rest. So you can always kind of rescue it bit of yellow into the eye slots and now we're back onto the basin so i've sped it up here and i'm going to say talking to you about the differences of uh, dry brushing and what i like to call wet brushing that i put on before now i am dry brushing the base up i don't want to put too much paint on so you can see in terms of time difference how much longer i'm spending doing this base not a lot of paint on the brush there going over and over and over and building back up that beastie brown layer so you can see all the different tones sort of through the base so this is a, you know a proper dry brush stage make sure you check that you've not got too much paint on the brush down on a piece of uh, tissue or whatever build up gradually and then the next sort of stage of the base is using a bleach bone color so i'm just showing you the tissue that i'm using there so you can see how much paint is actually going on and how much you're taking off onto that tissue now i've not talked about the skulls on the base i haven't really uh, painted them as such um so far whilst i was doing the rakar flesh layer on the armor i painted the skulls and now with this bleach bone thing i'm going over and over the skulls and building up a light dry brush there so that they differentiate themselves from the armor color and tie into the base as well so just quite a nice blasted uh, base effect there and you can see really really slowly build up with that dry brush and take a few minutes on each base how you want to finish your base is obviously entirely for yourself but i like to do some sort of dirty um, burnt grass effect tufts these ones that a friend made for me and um, slice them up into four pieces because i want little patches of grass and i'm going to focus on putting them around where the skulls are just for that destroyed um base effect now we're moving on and finishing off with some uh, details on the brass and the rivets so we're taking a games workshop now like oxide to show that oxidized brass because brass doesn't rust uh, dropping on here now at this point i was just going to leave a model like that and i wasn't going to paint all the rivets and bolts around the rest of the model but i turned around a bit and realized there's an awful lot of rivets and bolts so i stopped this stage went back and then did all the rivets and bolts in the model so a tiny tiny brush not a lot of paint in the end and you just drop in some of that brass color onto any exposed rivet now i didn't cover every rivet on the model because there's a lot in the legs here you can see i'm painting that actually i sank into some of that dirty area so i did leave a few of them not painted but it's moving around and just making sure you're catching all those rivets there 
back to that nylac oxide stage and then it is here painting the black edging on the bases just to finish the model off uh, tie it in and keep it neat and tidy and that's the two squads done fairly basic color scheme it's going to tie in nicely with the rest of the army now the next couple of videos i'm going to do i've got a couple more videos to come out for the death guard uh, actual army i've got the basic troopers to do and then all the unit uh, characters so keep watching the channel and uh, as this army builds up when it's done to a couple of thousand points i'll showcase it on the channel as well so i hope you enjoyed that if you did like comment and subscribe all that usual youtube jazz and hopefully i will see you again on here for another video soon thank you